we're going to be palpating abductor pollicis longus. So we're getting into the deep extensors of the forearm here. Abductor pollicis longus has a bit of a, an interesting kind of pathway for itself. So we're going to start by locating um, its origin. First thing we're going to do is try to identify where the head of the radius is, which is right in this region here. And the abductor pollicis longus is originating on the ulna as well as the radius and deep on the interosseous membrane. And if, again, if we looked at kind of in a quarter section, it's in the middle and a little bit above that. So right in here. Now I'm going to take her thumb. What I'm going to ask her to do is try to spread her hand and her thumb apart as if she was going to hold on to an object so that thumb moves away from that index finger. And I'm going to get you just to repeat that several times. Good. So we're going to follow down the forearm in here. And then it's going to start to cross from posterior towards anterior. I'm going to give you a little bit of resistance. I'm just pushing you in. Great. So I can actually cross fiber the tendon. It's got a nice synovial sheath protecting it. So it's actually fairly thick and fairly obvious to find. So you can find it quite easily there. I'm going to turn her hand just over a little bit more to a palmer view. And it's crossing the wrist joint right here as it inserts onto the base of this first metacarpal of the thumb. So right in this area, you actually have a sheath that's holding both abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis kind of wrapped up together. So it might get a little bit tricky as you're passing the wrist in this location, but again, it's insertion. It's kind of right here on the base of that first metacarpal. Because of this pathway, the actions of abductor pollicis longus are a little bit tricky. In its name, it's going to be obviously abducting the thumb, kind of bringing it away. It secondarily often helps with a little bit of extension of the thumb. So again, as the thumb is brought back, this being extension, this being more abduction, so almost a combination. And then to try and get this metacarpal back towards the forearm, it often ends up doing radial deviation of the wrist, like so. Questionably, as it's going to be doing more extension or flexion, so we're just going to leave that out for now. So we're going to be focusing more on abduction and radial deviation of the wrist joint. Okay. Again, as for all of our muscles in this posterior aspect of the forearm, it is innervated by the radial nerve. 